There was a brief ceasefire uh, for 12 hours. During that ceasefire, we got some amazing pictures out of Gaza, which we'll show you in a little bit. Uh, then, of course, the fighting resumed, although fighting is a interesting word for it. It's been decidedly one-sided so far. We'll give you the death counts in a minute, too. And one of the things that got hit was a building that the United Nations Relief and Work Agency was uh, using for Palestinian refugees inside Gaza. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about that. Unfortunately, at this UNRWA school, 17 people were killed and 200 were injured. The Daily Beast writes, and uh, last week, days before the incident, at Beit Hanun, Israeli officials uh, practically accused UNRWA of collaborating with Hamas militarily. So uh, Israeli military is saying, these guys are shielding Palestinians. Well, they are. That's their job. They're not shielding militants. They're shielding refugees in the tens of thousands. Sometimes now it seems like actually it's over 100,000 that have gone to them because there's literally nowhere else to go in Gaza. Now, the Israeli side claims that they are firing rockets from the UN schools. The UN emphatically denies that. They say, why would we allow that? Of course we don't allow that. Our whole point is to shield the refugees. Okay, now from time to time they have found rockets inside the UN buildings. Do you know who found them? The UN did. They turned them in immediately because they don't want them there. And then Israel goes, aha, you see that? You found rockets there. They're like, I know, that's why we expelled them. Because the whole point is it's for refugees. They literally have nowhere else to go. Okay. So Daily Beast continues, and it's an I believe it's really an editorial here at the Daily Beast more than uh, their uh, reporting. There were three attacks on other UN schools turned shelters before Thursday's carnage, they say, according to the agency's spokesperson, Christopher Gunnis. And 80 other UNRWA facilities have been damaged in this war. So, point being here, um, well, if Israel accidentally hit this UN school, well, they got a funny way of showing it because they said, yeah, you, the UN schools, you're the ones uh, shielding the Palestinians and the rockets. Plus, we hit three other ones, and 80 other ones got uh, damaged. Oh, oops, no, it was not us, it was someone else. It was an accident. We're going to get to that in a second. Christopher Gunnis of the UN says, there was no evidence of rockets in the schools that were attacked or signs of militants. So if you're saying that at some point some UN buildings turned in rockets that they found it, uh, that were found in their buildings, it wasn't the ones you hit, okay? And we turned them in, okay? Now, uh, unfortunately, it was just it was not just the UN school that was hit. Uh, more from the Associated Press. Palestinian officials have said three Israeli tank shells hit the school in the town of Beit Hanun last Thursday killing 16 people, now that's been 17 people and wounding dozens. That's the UN school. Now, uh, more on that. Israel acknowledged Sunday that troops fired a mortar shell that hit the courtyard of a UN school in Gaza last week, but said aerial footage shows the yard was empty at the time and that the shell could not have killed anyone. Well, how did the 17 people in the school die then? And you showed an image of an empty courtyard. That could have been from any time. It could have been before the bombing. It could have been after the bombing. In fact, we'll get to that in a second as well. They say the shell was not fired at the school intentionally, an army spokesman said. Well, they didn't mean it. They just keep making all these mistakes. The UN says about 80% of the people killed are all civilians. You see, Israel apparently, according to their own admission, have the most incompetent military in the world. The 80% of their rockets go to the wrong place. Those are such unlucky breaks. And it's funny how the rocket ends in a place that they've been criticizing all this time, but it was just an unintentional one, and I'm sure that did no damage, and the 17 people died there through other means, unexplained. Well, Lieutenant Colonel P Peter Lerner begins to explain it, an Israeli army spokesman said, Sunday that a military probe shows that a single errant mortar landed in the courtyard. A single errant mortar, and it could, could have happened to anybody, okay? Um, and he continued by saying, it is extremely unlikely that anybody was killed as a result of this mortar. So how in the world did they ride? Well, AP photos from the scene shortly after the incident showed large spots of blood on the edges of the courtyard and people's belongings strewn about. So that empty courtyard they showed you saying, see, nobody died? Some chance that it was taken afterwards when everybody already fleed because there was already blood on the walls. Oops. 
So here's the explanation they countered with. Uh, he, meaning Lieutenant Colonel uh, Peter Lerner from the Israeli Defense Forces, also offered other scenarios that the wounded were brought to the compound after injury. Okay, let's think that through for a second. Is Hamas beyond doing that for propaganda purposes? No, I don't think so. Is the United Nations going to risk their entire credibility by dragging 200 wounded and 17 dead into their UN school that Israel innocently fired an errant mortar into just to make it seem like Israel killed the Palestinians? Now, you really gotta be blind to believe that. And you gotta say, like, my side is always right, the other side is never right. And it's the United Nations, they're 100% on the side of Hamas. Why would they be on the side of, their the whole job is to protect these refugees. They're trying to protect the refugees. There's not a grand conspiracy where they drag in dead bodies to UN schools to blame Israel. Okay, so well, all right, now all this damage has been done. Uh, well, what do you think, uh, Israel? Should we uh, do a ceasefire? No. We had the 12-hour ceasefire to remove some of the wounded and so people can go back to their homes, get uh, some emergency provisions, etc. That is over, obviously. Uh, and an unidentified government official for Israel said, quote, there is no need for any more ceasefires. Now, you have to understand something. They are responding to the will of their people. They are. Um, you like it, you don't like it, it is what it is. 87% uh, want Israel to continue operations until Hamas is toppled. <laughs> what does that mean? So you're not gonna topple Hamas. What are the Palestinians gonna come out and be like, okay, no, that's it, it's over. Everybody in Hamas is dead and we're not following them anymore. How would they even do that? Even if they wanted to do that, how would they express that to the world community? So in other words, 87% of Israelis say, yeah, just keep going, who cares? In fact, 86.5% of Israel's Majority uh, Jews, and because there are Israeli Arabs too, that's why they say Israel's majority Jews oppose calling a truce. So no, no truce. So all those people who were saying, oh, it's all Hamas's fault for uh, no truce, no. Here it is, Israel saying, we got no interest in a truce, no interest in further ceasefires, we're gonna go forward. In fact, they'll be more clear about that in a second. An Israeli official said the army hoped the widespread desolation would persuade Gazans to put pressure on Hamas to stop the fighting for fear of yet more devastation. That's a damning quote right there. So for all the people who are making excuses for Israel with now well over a thousand dead, according to the UN, about 80% of them civilians. Like, well, it wasn't intentional, whoops, Oh, did we kill civilians again? No, 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 but here's Israel saying, no, we intend to do enough damage, enough devastation until they cry uncle and they say, okay, we're getting rid of Hamas. So that damage is intentional, make no mistake about that. So that's the biggest excuse in the world. <sighs> Hamas and the Palestinians, they want to kill civilians, but they can't. Us, we don't want to kill civilians, we just accidentally killed 80%. Uh, of the people that we hit were civilians, what can we do? No, 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 they want to persuade Gazans to put pressure on Hamas to stop the fighting for fear of yet more devastation. More from Reuters, the Gaza turmoil has stoked tensions among Palestinians and mainly Arab East Jerusalem and in the occupied West Bank, which Abbas governs in uneasy coordination with the Israelis. So, another thing that Israel wanted to do was sow the seeds of discord between Palestinians, check, mission accomplished. So the deaths are not necessarily accidental, it's part of a plan that is actually going fairly well for the Israelis so far, if you agree with those objectives. Now here's another interesting quote from Reuters. But residents of villages near the southern town of Khan Yunis on Sunday attacked office of the International Committee of the Red Cross, torching furniture and causing damage. They said the organization had not done enough to help them. Now, those are Palestinian residents who I wholeheartedly disagree with, I disagree with them uh, with the, in the comforts of my studio in Los Angeles, which is fairly easy to do, right? But should they have toppled the Red Cross thing? Of course not, that's so counterproductive. Yes, you're frustrated, right? But Red Cross is not the enemy. But look at this, you bomb the living hell out of Gaza, they get so frustrated, they start attacking each other, and they start attacking the people who are trying to help them. You sure that this was all unintentional? Now let me show you pictures that we got. Uh, once we had that 12 hour ceasefire. Now here is, oh, these are all from Gaza. <laughs> so they unintentionally took out whole city blocks. You think that when bombs hit like this and pulverize neighborhoods, 
Uh, in one of these buildings, by the way, 20 mem uh, members of one family died. Look at that bomb right there. And the rescue workers trying to dig people out, uh, the dead. There weren't any survivors in that particular building. Um, you think that, oops, oh, that was just a mistake that we happened to level that whole city block and there were all those civilians in there? Okay, you keep believing that. Okay, there's a, somebody, there was a, uh, a warning that the Israelis were coming again. That's a Palestinian fleeing literally for his life. Now, if you're that Palestinian, go back to that picture for a second. If you're that Palestinian, <laughs> what confidence do you have that they're not going to say, well, oh, look at that, it's a military age male. The US says the same thing, right? And he's running, must be guilty, right? That's a civilian running for his life. What's his chance of survival? All right, go to the next picture. Um, now, there's a almost dead dying donkey. Now, why are there donkeys? Haha, <laughs> the Arabs are so backwards. No, there's a blockade of Gaza, and so they can't get fuel in. And there's been such an enormous shortage of fuel They've gone backwards and resorted to using more horses and donkeys for transportation, uh, but now a lot of those have been killed in the bombings. So you don't have fuel, and now you don't even have uh, mules to carry stuff for you. Okay, great. There's a woman who uh, went back to her home, found that it no longer exists. There's another man who went back to his home and realized that it was obliterated, everything that he had loved inside that home, pictures, all of his worldly possessions, gone. Uh, there is a rare Israeli um, tank armored vehicle uh, that was left in the fighting. If I was those guys, I'd get off that right away. Okay, uh, bombs coming for that at some point. Okay, <laughs> you know, isn't that humanity is amazing, right? <laughs> they left their birds behind because they ran in a panic because they grabbed their kids instead. They came back to feed their birds and were fa uh, amazed to find that they were still alive. Why do you, I mean, I can't believe they still care about the birds, but I guess they're better people than I am. Uh, all right. Uh, well, there's a Red Crescent um, vehicle that obviously is no longer in service and not able to help anyone. I mean, look at the background. They live here, or they used to live here. And Gaza is tiny, and Israel keeps saying, well, what, we give them warnings to leave, why don't they just leave? Where were they going to go? One guy talks about how they, they got bombed at the UN school. He said, we had 10 minutes to leave. By the time I figured out how to leave, they'd already bombed us. He's in the hospital, right? You see that building? If you're inside that building and you got anywhere from a 3 to 10 minute warning, you sure you would have made it out? And where would you have gone? You would have gone to a UN shelter, which then gets bombed. Okay. So more from the Associated Press, just not just the UN. More than 170,000 people have already uh, fled the fighting, with many seeking shelter in UN facilities. Good luck to them. A strike on a Gaza park killed 10 people Monday, nine of them children, and as Israeli and Palestinian authorities traded blame over the attack. Okay, uh, new talking points for the Israeli Defense Forces is, oh no, it was um, it was Hamas militants that fired a rocket uh, that was errant. Some of the pictures we just showed you, <laughs> have you seen the Hamas rockets we've shown to you on previous programs? They don't do that kind of damage. So if you want to prove that it was really a Hamas rocket, it would be incredibly easy to prove. You just show, look, the, the dent that it made in this car, you see that? That's the kind of damage that the Palestinians do. But in this case, people, Hamas rockets don't do that. I'm sure that I'm not giving Hamas any inch here of ground. I'm sure that Hamas would love to do that, right? But they can't, they don't have that ability, okay? So when this happens, it's not really a question of whether Hamas or Israel did it, okay? So uh, in a strike that killed 10 people, nine of them children, it's unlikely that a Hamas rock could do it. Is it possible? Well, that's why Israel says it. Well, you don't know, do you? I banned reporters from on the ground, so you don't know. Ha ha, it could have been either side. Go ahead and report it as either side, right? And all of the media will, of course, go along with that. Uh, the strike occurred a few minutes after an outpatient clinic at Gaza's main hospital, Shifa, was hit, leaving several people wounded. So the hospital gets hit. Luckily, no one dies there. A bunch of people are wounded. They go outside, and there they are at a park. Boom, the park gets hit. Why do you, hey, we told you we were going to bomb things. Why don't you just leave? How callous is that? Well, why didn't you just leave Gaza? Oh, right, because of the Israeli blockade, you can never leave Gaza. Which they say is not occupied territory. I don't know what you're talking about. Great, if it's not occupied, I'll just walk out. Oh, right, I can't walk out. All right, uh, here comes Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner again, the Israeli Army spokesperson. This incident was carried out by Gaza terrorists, whose rockets fell short and hit the Shifa hospital and the beach camp. Of course they did. 
So um, how many killed so far? 1,050 Palestinians, as the UN says, majority uh, civilians, great majority civilians. 52 soldiers on the Israeli side and three civilians as well. Now look, I don't want to balance. I don't, I don't want 1,000 Israelis to dead too. That would just double the tragedy. I want less dead Palestinians. If you actually cared not to target them, when you have one of the most sophisticated military in the world, you think you could do a little bit better job of not hitting them. Okay. And then they ironically say, but Gaza is so small, when we fire in, what can we do? Of course we're going to hit civilians. Then don't give me the excuse about how they had plenty places to run. Okay. So what uh, do we have in the future? Well, we go to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu who says, quote, we need to be ready for a prolonged campaign. And then the Israeli military says, what is coming will be worse. Um, I fear to see what is worse than this, uh, but I believe them. When uh, a Jabalia resident that's in Gaza was asked, uh, are you going to evacuate again? Because people got bombed, they moved, they get bombed again, they get warnings. Uh, she said, maybe in the morning we will evacuate if we're still alive. Let me show you one last picture. Young Turks. <laughs>